Not too long ago, a movie called The Eternals came out. Do you remember The Eternals? Yeah, I almost forgot it existed. And then all of a sudden it was on Disney Plus and I was like, oh yeah, that one. <laughs> <laughs> so I decided to give it a watch and um, I've never heard of the Eternals. I don't read a bunch of comic books. So maybe if you're like really big into Marvel comics, you'll know what these superheroes are, but I've never heard of them. So I was going in blind like, okay, uh, the Eternals, random, fine. Let's see what they are. I was thinking maybe it'd be another like Guardians of the Galaxy type situation. Apparently Eternals also has a TV miniseries from 2014. I've clearly never seen this and I haven't even heard about it until I put Eternals into IMDb and it popped up. Chloe Zhao wrote and directed this movie. She's the same person behind the movie Nomad Lad. Nomad Lad. Nomad Lad. Oh God. Which I liked a lot. It got a lot of buzz during the Oscars. She made two other movies that have a lot of good reviews. Songs My Brothers Taught Me and The Writer. I haven't seen them myself, but people online like them. So it's safe to say that Chloe Zhao knows what she's doing. And it looks like The Eternals is the first superhero movie that she's worked on. It looks like this movie is way out of her comfort zone. Normally she does very grounded movies, character studies. All of her movies seem to be based in the real world. No sci-fi, no fantasy. I also want to mention that on IMDb, The Eternals has a very fancy banner. That's how you know it's a Disney movie because they put lots of money into their fancy banners for IMDb. Thank you so much to Displate for sponsoring this video. I'm super excited to sponsor Displate because I honestly love them. You see the posters behind me? They're all from Displate. Displate is about collecting and sharing your passions. They have over a million designs. They have Star Wars, Marvel, DC, The Witcher, Cyberpunk, Bethesda. If you can think of it, there's probably a Displate of it. They have up to 40,000 artists on the site and they deliver to 56 countries around the world. They're printed on metal and they're incredibly easy to mount with four very easy steps. First you use a cleaning cloth to clean the area on the wall. Then you attach these wall safety pads to your wall and then you attach the magnets to those pads and put up your display. Honestly the best part about display is that if you don't put it on the wall right you can always adjust it so it's level. And if you want to replace that display with another display it's extremely easy to do. All you do is take it off and put another one up. Display is a good alternative to standard paper impressions or canvas printing. All of them are printed in the EU. So if you want a display for yourself or someone that you love, click my link at the top of the description and you will save 23% on one to two displays and 27% if you order three or more displays. Thank you so much to Display for sponsoring this video. Now back to the review. I'm going to be spoiling this movie. So if you don't want the Eternal spoiled for you, you should click off this video, maybe watch it, then come back. You know, it's up to you, but please watch my video, <laughs> please. Please watch my video. <laughs> so the movie starts with a text scroll. I saw some people complaining about it online. I didn't really mind this, especially if it preps the audience to absorb a lot of information. These help with lore heavy movies like Blade Runner, for example, or Star Wars that might otherwise be hard to follow. Immediately, this movie presents itself as a very CGI heavy movie. In movies like this, I don't mind so much because obviously they're going to have to use a lot of computer effects to pull off superheroes that use crazy abilities. These Eternals all have these like glowing golden weird abilities. They're kind of like the boring versions of the X-Men. They all have their role to play. Some of them are quirky. Some of them are serious and brooding. One scene shows Earth from space 7,000 years ago. The view shows Northern Africa with the Sahara Desert. However, 7,000 years ago, the Sahara was not a desert, but covered in grass, trees, and lakes. The African humid period ended 6,000 to 5,000 years ago. I didn't find that online, okay? I just knew that. And I gotta say, the CGI is pretty great. There were a couple times when you could kind of pick out some flaws in it, but for the most part, it's seamless. I mean, I would expect a movie with a $200 million budget to have good CGI. <laughs> This is kind of a nitpick. The beginning of this movie takes place thousands and thousands of years ago during the cavemen period. And the Eternals are speaking English to each other. Yeah, that's right, guys. I mean, you might speak French or Italian or whatever, but English is the language of the gods. Get with it. Looks like I'm not just benefiting from being a cis white straight male, but I also speak English. The language of the Eternals, the god language, if you will. Obviously, it's going to be different in different countries. I know that it's just it's a joke. 
It's a joke. So there's a deaf girl and her name is Makari. And there's a scene when she's in ancient Mesopotamia using sign language. And there are several signs that even in those times would have made no sense to the population. Like when she signs time, she points at her wrist. They would not know what a wristwatch is, so it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> then there's a part where the Eternals are helping the locals farm. They are seen to be planting corn, which didn't exist in that part of the world. Which is a huge mistake, Chloe Zhao. I just, come on, <laughs> what were you thinking? <laughs> One of the Eternals is named Cersei, and she can like touch things and turn them into different things. She can like touch a boulder and turn it into water, etc. At around 10 minutes, she turns the fossil that's hanging on a wall into dust before it lands on a little girl. Yet after they get up off the floor, they're clean and there's no dust in their hair or clothes. Also, if you were this little girl, wouldn't you be confused? Oh wow, someone just dumped a full sandbox on my head. I don't know <laughs> where that come from. <laughs> In this movie, there's these monsters called deviants. They're like these basic beasts made of like vines or something. They're very boring. Thank God they are not the actual antagonist of the movie because that would suck. There's some pretty fun scenes when they're fighting these things, but by themselves, they're very boring creatures. They're just like random monsters. So Richard Madden is in this movie. His real name is Rob Stark and he plays an eternal named Icarus. Icarus and Cersei are in love in the beginning. Their romance has zero chemistry. It's not believable at all. Kit Harrington is in this movie too. His real name being Jon Snow. We fast forward a little bit. And Cersei and Rob Stark, weird when I say it like that because then you're probably thinking about the Cersei from Game of Thrones. <laughs> Cersei and Icarus are a thing in the beginning. Then we fast forward in time by like thousands of years and Cersei has a new boyfriend, except he's a human and his name is Dane. Yeah, that's Jon Snow. So Cersei like moved on from her brother and is now dating all the Stark brothers. She just loves brothers. <laughs> Dane in the comics is supposed to become the Black Knight. You can always tell in these comic book movies, if there's a high profile actor and they're playing like a random dude in a comic book movie, it's more than likely that in a future movie, they're going to become a hero themselves. It's not surprising anymore. At the very end of the credits, it's like, oh my God, Dane is actually a superhero. Did you know that? Did you know that? Yes, we knew that. <laughs> it's not a big reveal anymore. Like, it's obvious. You think they're just gonna throw Kit Harrington into this role as a random boyfriend and not promise him any sort of like big role in the future as a superhero? No, of course not. So Cersei tells Dane that she was with Icarus for 5,000 years. However, the next flashback shows that their relationship started while they were living in Babylon in 575 BC and ended a century before the events of the movie. So they were actually together for 2,500 years. Looks like math is not your best subject, Chloe. Unless they pulled it from the comics, in which case I'm not going to look up who did the comics. <laughs> I'm just going to be lazy this time, guys. <laughs> Jack Kirby. That's who created the, the Eternals. Jack Kirby. Gotcha. I know you little comic book nerds were getting ready to type on your keyboards. Oh my God, Elvis, I can't believe it. Salma Hayek plays an Eternal named Ajak and she's the prime Eternal, which means she's like the leader that can talk to a celestial. And she's the only one that knows the real reason why they're on earth. I'll explain the backstory in a little bit. And randomly she shows up dead and all the Eternals are like, oh my God, she's dead. And if you look at her body, she's laying on the ground like a plank. That's not how someone lies down dead. She looks like she was lying in a coffin. Her body underwent rigor mortis, and then they removed her from the coffin and put her on the ground. So she's nice and stiff. <laughs> she had the ability to heal people. So if one of the Eternals got injured, she could always be the one to back them up and heal them. So with her gone, it like complicates things, right? Because, oh my God, who's going to heal us now? Angelina Jolie is in this movie too. You guys thought I forgot about her? Huh? No. She plays the Eternal named Thena. She's like this warrior woman that uses a shield and a sword. She suffers from this like mind disease in the movie. It's called Mod Weary or something. It's spelled like this. It basically just makes them hostile towards everybody around them. They don't know what's going on. They just start attacking people. At first, they think that it's because she's lived too long and she's accumulated too many memories. But what's really happening is she's tapping into her old memories of them helping destroy other worlds. Okay, I should probably give some backstory now, so you guys aren't so confused. Basically, a big celestial comes around, and he creates the Eternals. A celestial is like a big god-like being. And they also create stars, and they put them next to planets in order to create life. But in order to create a celestial, they put a little baby celestial into a planet, which acts like an egg type thing. And in order for this egg to incubate correctly, there has to be a certain number of living things on the planet that have reached a certain level of intelligence. 
and the human race has reached that level. Which is pretty surprising because people like this exist, and this, and this. So maybe this particular celestial will be born like, you know, little, uh, <laughs> little cuckoo. <laughs> or maybe Tony Stark and Bruce Banner are so smart that they make up for all the dumbasses on Earth. Maybe that's what's happening. So you might be wondering what the Eternals do. Remember those evil dog things, the deviants? Well, the Celestials created the deviants and they ended up turning on the Celestials. So the Celestials trying to fix their mistake are like, oh shit. All right, now we have to create something to take care of the deviants. So the deviants don't kill off all of the people because if there's no more people, then the Celestials can't be born. So the Eternals go to different planets and kill off the deviants, protecting the intelligent life form until the celestial can be born. And when the celestial is born, it's called the emergence. In doing so, it destroys the planet and everybody on it, except for the Eternals, because the Celestial is like protecting the Eternals when it is born, I guess. So yeah, that's a lot of lore, but I think Chloe Zhao did a pretty good job explaining it in this movie. At no point did it feel like they were explaining too much, and I was like, oh my god, it's so boring. They spaced out the information in a good way, and when they do explain all this stuff, it's like a big, oh shit moment, you know? So it makes it more interesting. It doesn't seem like a big exposition dump. Barry Keegan, he's one of the main characters from a Yorgos Lanthimos movie that I like a lot, named The Killing of a Sacred Deer. He's also in Dunkirk and The Green Knight. He's hilarious in The Green Knight, and he's one of the reasons you should watch that movie. I like it a lot, but I'm not talking about that movie right now. Yes, he's also in Eternals, and he plays this guy named Druig. He has the power to manipulate people's minds and control them, but he's forced to sit by and watch as wars take place, and thousands and thousands of people are killed. He believes that these deaths don't need to occur because he has the power to stop them. But the Eternals, they can't interfere with anything. Their job is to make sure the emergence happens, and that's it. But in making sure the emergence happens, that means they have to interfere sometimes, right? Like when they kill the Deviants? If a deviant's attacking someone, they can save that person and kill the deviant. But they can't interfere unless there's a deviant involved. Except for those times when they did interfere. Like when she made the fossil into sand and it didn't crush the girl. If she was really an eternal, she would just let it happen. Like, just let the girl get crushed. <laughs> so yeah, Druig doesn't like standing by and watching people kill each other. And over time, this weighs on him. And one day, he decides to abandon the mission and stop the violence, but also take away these people's free will. So yeah, obviously, Earth is a planet that's holding a celestial. And the Eternals have to make a decision. Oh my god, are we going to let Earth get destroyed? and let this celestial be birthed and allow the emergence to happen and let the celestial create a lot more life. That's the big dilemma. Oh my God, if we let the celestial live, then that could mean a lot more life throughout the universe. Or we could save Earth and kill the celestial because humans are pretty cool. <laughs> I think it's pretty obvious the right choice, you know? Like, just let Earth go. Maybe the Avengers can, like, go off in a spaceship and find a different planet to chill on. Give birth to this god that will create so much more life. It's just selfish letting people live at that point, right? But, but I wonder which one <laughs> ends up happening. I do like this problem. It makes for a fun movie. So Arishem is the name of the celestial that the Eternals are talking to. He's like this big red dude with a bunch of eyeballs and Ajak was talking to it until Ajak told Icarus that she wants to kill the celestial. And Icarus is like, what? Why would you ever do that? She's like, oh, people are pretty cool. They defeated Thanos. You see that? That was epic. And Icarus goes, okay, what? So Icarus betrays Ajak and has her killed. He like feeds her to the wolves. He pushes her off a cliff onto a frozen lake. And there's a bunch of deviants on it. And she lands like right next to a shotgun. It's pretty funny. Like where the fuck did that thing come from? So yeah, she's dead. And one of the deviants like absorbs her life force. And that's like a special deviant. And guess what? That deviant turns into Pennywise the Cloud. I'm only half joking. He becomes this alien human thing. He absorbs their powers like Cell from DBZ and becomes this four-eyed human looking alien thing named Crow. And it's played by Bill Skarsgård. I'm not a big fan of how this alien thing looks. I didn't like this alien thing. It came out of nowhere and it served very little purpose. I guess it made the deviants a little more interesting. It fleshed them out a little bit. It was like, oh my God, they actually have a soul and they were rebelling against the Celestials for a reason and they're not just crazy animals. 
And look at this weird one. It's absorbing people. It looks like a weird version of the Na'vi from James Cameron's Avatar, if HP Lovecraft designed it. Lots of tentacles. I love how these celestials are like these huge wise beings, but they suck at creating new celestials because they fucked up twice. They created the deviants and the deviants were like, no, fuck you. So they're like, oh shit. So we have to create the Eternals to fight the deviants. But then they fucked up again because they gave the Eternals emotions, human emotions that could easily disrupt their plans. They even say as much in the movie. As you can see, being an Eternal does not preclude you from having human emotions. Why wouldn't they just make them powerful, emotionless robots that just go around killing deviants? That's all you need. I know you want them to blend in, but like, why? They're gods. They don't have to get a job. <laughs> I know one of their roles is to kind of like speed up the rate at which they become intelligent. So they give humans things like the wheel and the steam engine and stuff like that so they can evolve. Basically all the cool inventions from mankind were just due to the Eternals. The Eternals did all that shit. Obviously that's broken in many ways, but um, <laughs> I'm not gonna even begin to go down that path, okay? You can have them introduce things that will speed up their intelligence without giving them emotions so they can become attached to the people that they're there to basically kill off. This is such a massive design flaw because the Eternals are there to practically save human beings from the Deviants. So they're helping these people out. They're not just saving their lives, they're making them prosper and make their species thrive. And the Prime Eternal has to live with the knowledge that they're going to kill all these people eventually. And they're not supposed to tell the other Eternals, but they can do that if they want to. They could just come out and tell all the Eternals, hey, guess why we're here? To kill everybody, to give birth to a god. There's nothing stopping them from telling them except for the fact that they don't want them to like betray the plan or something. I don't understand how this plan doesn't fail on every single planet. It ends now. Why did the Eternals become attached to these humans but none of the other ones throughout history, like all the thousands of years that they've been doing this, this is the first time they became attached to the species that they're saving in order to kill off later? What? So you're telling me that when they did this to a previous species, they were saving them, saving them, saving them, helping them, helping them, helping them. And then one day they were like, all right, guys, you're all gonna die now. Giving birth to the celestial. And all the Eternals are like, sounds good, dude. And then they just fly away and kill all these people that they were helping for hundreds, thousands of years. What? Oh my God. In reality, this would happen every single time. Druig would always feel guilty about not helping the people that are killing each other. They don't only become attached to these people. The Eternals have every single flaw that a normal person has, like pride, ego, wrath, whatever. One of them becomes a movie star because he loves attention. It's so weird. One of them is addicted to social media on their phone. Sprite says you're addicted to this thing. Oh, this? <laughs> So Cersei is chosen by Ajax to be the new Prime Eternal. And Icarus is all butthurt about this because he thought he was like the favorite, you know? There's pride getting in the way. And it causes a lot of tension between him and Druig. It's so stupid. They even argue like petty YouTubers. They talk about views. I'm not joking. <laughs> I've directed some things too. Oh yeah? Like what? Some internet content. How many views? I don't do it for the views. Ah! I don't do it for the views. I know it was a joke, okay? There's some funny parts in this movie, I gotta say. And the fight scenes are fun. It's fun watching them all use their different abilities. Even if some of their powers are really stupid, one of them literally uses finger guns and like lasers shoot out of them. It's so dumb. Finger guns, really? Okay. The finger guns guy is named Kingo. He's like the movie star. There's this dude that follows him around with a the camera. They wanna make like a documentary on his life. <laughs> His name's Karoon, and he's hilarious. I wanna watch this movie again just because of Karoon. He's really funny. Like every single scene he's in, I love it. It's very nice here, sir. Don't be fooled. The Celestials even make one of the Eternals a child. They're not even all adults and they can't age. That's like a big thing in this movie. Like the child's name is Sprite and she has this cool ability to like create illusions. 
and turn herself into somebody else. She makes people see things, basically. And there's a lot of really cool scenes where she does this. But one of the big conflicts stems from her wanting to become an adult. And she's really jealous of the other Eternals who got to live out their lives as adults. And she never got that chance. So it made her super bitter. And so at the end of the movie, she sides with Icarus. And it ends up becoming Icarus and Sprite versus the other Eternals. And they fight each other over their conflicting ideals. But I just can't get over the fact that the Celestials are so dumb. How could they not have foreseen these design flaws? It's insane. Just make Sprite into an adult. What? It's like two simple things and all of your problems would be solved. I love how the Eternals can't interfere with anything unless it's related to the Deviants. But what if something is on Earth and it threatens humanity more than the Deviants do? They can't interfere then? They didn't interfere when Thanos was a threat? What about when Ultron was a thing? That was a pretty big deal. He could have definitely destroyed all of humanity. Your Celestial's just gonna turn to a hard-boiled egg at that point. What are you gonna do about that? Do they just kind of like sit around and twiddle their thumbs while people are being murdered by something other than the Deviants? Makes no sense. Obviously in the movie they don't do this, but that's what they're supposed to do. I really liked the fight between Icarus and the other Eternals. It was fun. I liked it a lot. And then Alien Skarsgård comes out of nowhere and ruins it. He's so goofy looking and he's not interesting. I don't like him. Like many other men, he tries to suck the life out of Angelina Jolie. And he fails. Gets his head diced. And that's it. Pennywise the Alien is dead. Hey guys, it's Pennywise the Alien. This is not funny. There's this really cool part at the end when Icarus is given the decision to either kill the woman he loves Cersei and fulfill the emergence in Arishem's plan or stop himself from killing her and go against everything he believes in. It's these choices in particular that make this movie more than just another dumb superhero movie. At the end, the Celestial is like partially outside of Earth. Its hand is coming up and his face is like poking out and Icarus makes his decision and he kills Cersei and the world blows up and everyone dies. <laughs> Obviously not. He doesn't kill Cersei and he joins all the other Eternals with the Celestial and they grant Cersei the power to like turn it into stone as it's emerging. And it's pretty hilarious because then they show on the news that people are like freaking out that this random god is appearing from the earth. <laughs> you guys did that? Icarus, unable to live with the choice that he made, flies into the sun. Do you guys get it? Icarus flying into the sun. <laughs> Do you get it? It's pretty, it's not blatant at all. It's whatever. I thought it was cute. There's a sweet moment at the end when Cersei, with the leftover power of the Celestial, turns Sprite into a human, granting her the ability to age and experience life like she's always wanted, even though she'll die, but you know, who cares? <laughs> So yeah, Arishem's pretty pissed. He comes to Earth and he's like, bitch, what the fuck? What you guys do, damn. He then takes three of the Eternals with him and he's like, fuck you, and he leaves. He just teleports away and he steals them. I don't know, he put them in jars or something. But Thena, Druig, and Makari are all on their spaceship. And this is during the first post credit scene when a poorly rendered troll man named Pip pops out of nowhere, voiced by Patton Oswald of all people. No more drunk teleporting for you. Shortly after, along comes comes Harry Styles. He plays someone named Star Fox. Watch out, Smash players. He's here and he's gonna kick your ass. <laughs> oh, sorry, his name is also Eros. He knows where to find the other heroes, I guess. And then there's a second post credit scene of Dane looking at a sword. He's like, oh my God, I'm gonna become the Black Knight. I'm a hero too, guys. Give me a movie. <laughs> That's what all these actors want. Make me a superhero, please. They're all fighting for it, aren't they? I bet every single actor in Hollywood that isn't over the age of like 70 is sitting there like praying that they will get a role as a superhero. <laughs> but yeah, that's the Eternals. I liked it. And I also thought it was kind of silly and stupid in some ways, but overall it was fun. I like some of the conflict introduced. Alien Skarsgård kind of sucked, but I like the dilemmas that the characters faced. I don't know. I'd probably give like a 6.5 out of 10. Boring X-Men have a pretty fun movie. Let me know what you guys thought of this movie in the comment section down below. And let me know what I should review next. I'm working on a massive video for all the Harry Potter movies that will be out in like two months, I'm guessing. And I'm also writing a novel and that's gonna take a billion years too. So I'm working on a lot of big things at the same time. So yeah, guys, I really appreciate when you watch these little videos that I make every once in a while because it helps me feed myself and I just like the discussion. It's fun. Thank you so much to all my patrons. You guys make videos like this possible and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. Toodaloo. Toodaloo.